Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all. This is here with AWIA Media, and I thank you for joining me. Today's video is a different one to the usual. I recently went on vacation and found the coolest little true crime museum, and I thought it would make for a great video. The place is called the True Crime Museum, and it's located in the town of Hastings, England. I will start the video by detailing everything you can see and do there, and show you some photographs that I personally took. Then, I will play some clips I recorded on our walk around, and will finish with some of the official photographs from the True Crime Museum, which can be found on their website. The museum has so many cool things to look at. But, if we're being honest, the best things are the real things. The things that were actually used in a crime, of which, this place has many. One of the first things you come across, after you enter, is an electric chair, which you are allowed to sit in. Here's me, scaring my daughter, by sitting in it, and pretending to convulse. The first major section you come to, is all about police and criminals. Here, you will find examples of police uniforms, and instruments, and how they have changed throughout the years. They also have an array of items, that have been used in real armed robberies, like this Wayne Rooney mask, that was used in a bank robbery. They also have real deactivated weapons, that were also used in crimes. One of the most interesting displays in this section is a collection of real shanks and weapons that were confiscated from prisoners. It's morbidly fascinating to see how creative prisoners can be, well, when they want to hurt or kill someone. There is also a large section dedicated to the Crate Twins, which showcases real letters, drawing, and boxing gloves that were used by them. They even have an order of service from the funeral of Reginald Cray. The next sections deal exclusively to serial killers, and this is where a lot of the big guns are displayed. One of the first items you see is a real velvet bodice that was worn by Amelia Dyer. She was a serial killer in the Victorian era. She was a trained nurse, but turned to baby farming for financial gain. She would adopt children for money, then immediately kill the child, and then either bury or incinerate the remains. It is unknown exactly how many children died by her hands, but at least 100 can be officially linked to her. Experts believe the real figure is probably 200 to 300 children. Next up is a real axe used in the murders that Lizzie Borden was tried and acquitted of. Most people believe that Lizzie had murdered her parents, but she was acquitted. As well as the real axe, there are also recreations of the skulls of her parents, in which you can see the catastrophic injuries that were inflicted upon them. One of my personal favorite displays is of John George Haig, the acid bath murderer. Haig murdered at least six people, but would confess to nine. He murdered people purely for financial gain. When they were dead, he dismembered the bodies and dissolved the parts in acid. On display here, they have the actual carboys that were used to dissolve one of his victims. They also have a mannequin dressed in exactly what he would have worn during the dissolving process. Next, they have a large display of original artwork made by serial killers and murderers. There are many here by Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. They have some letters from him and drawings he had done whilst in prison. There is also artwork by Otis Toole, the homicidal sidekick of Henry Lee Lucas. There are also artwork by lesser-known murderers, which adds a new dimension to the exhibits. Just behind the artwork is a small, surround sound cinema that is continuously playing. The cinema plays videos of serial killers talking about their crimes. They feature the likes of Jeffrey Dahmer, Dennis Rader, Ted Bundy, Edmund Kemper, and many others. You can go and sit on a bench and watch for as long as you like. It's an excellent change of pace, and the dark room and loud sound is brilliantly eerie. Arguably the best exhibits on display are shown in a small cave that you enter through slaughterhouse-style blinds. Inside, there are four items to see, and they are equally disturbing. First, they have a real deathbed that was used for lethal injections in the Philippines. They also have an accurate recreation of the drugs that are used in the process. It's truly unnerving to think how many people died on that very bed. In a glass box, they have a real human skull that belongs to the rapist and triple murderer, Louis Lefevre. He was executed by guillotine in 1916. It's very surreal to see a real human skull, and the fact that it belongs to a real murderer and an executed one at that makes it so much more interesting. Hanging from a hook is a noose that was used to execute two prisoners at Lincoln Prison. 
First was Louis Constantine, who was hanged on September 1, 1960. He had beaten a pensioner to death when robbing her shop. The other was Wassil Nypuk, on January 27, 1961, after he murdered and dismembered an elderly woman in her home. His execution was the last in Lincolnshire. This is an incredible piece of criminal history. The last exhibit is an old bathtub. At first, it seems out of place until you read the sign next to it. This bathtub was removed from the home of John Childs. That name may not be familiar with you, it isn't for many people. John Childs is an English serial killer, professional criminal, and contract killer who murdered at least six people, including a child. Childs was known for his absolute lack of empathy and brutality. Childs dismembered at least four, but probably all of his victims, in this very bathtub. After learning that, the bathtub becomes one of the most fascinating items in the museum. The last section of the museum is more family-friendly, but still really enjoyable. It details how detectives have worked throughout the years, and there is even a challenge for everyone to test how good of a detective they would make. Okay, in terms of my narration, I'm just about done. Following this, I will add the video clips I have taken and end with some nice polished photographs. I seriously urge everyone to give this place a visit if you're able. But until next time, long days and pleasant nights.